So my whole life I've been very fascinated with what I call spiritual masters, people who have mastered vibration and feel unconditional love and alignment and are able to be catalysts to express knowledge of source and of life. It's nice to see anyone demonstrating the receptive mode. You see it in sports all the time. Yeah. You see it in music all the time, in all walks of life. Yeah, I love it. So I've been very interested specifically in Eastern philosophies and, and ways of life. People who I consider spiritual masters, the Buddha, Jesus, Dalai Lama, even more modern people today like Eckhart Tolle, Sadhguru. I'm sure you're familiar with all these people. They're humans, right? Can I just be like, they're not aliens. <laughs> People like the Buddha, people, for instance, I've been very fascinated by the saint in India called Neem Kroli Baba, who is able to read people's minds and influence people to open up their hearts and to live such pure lives, people like Ram Das and all these other spiritual teachers of our time. So my question is, what is it that they have done or are doing that makes them so special or able to be these catalysts? of unconditional love. It's the consistency of the receptive mode. So just being in the vortex and all the time. Well, not all the time. Right, because they one have of to them. live out contrast. Not one of them. They all have step five moments. Step five, you know what we're talking about there? Step one is where contrast causes you to ask. Step two is you've launched this asking into this vortex and source has answered it. So it's vibrationally already been given. Step three is you tune your frequency to the frequency of your vortex so that it can move seamlessly from the vibrational realm into your see it, hear it, smell it, taste it, touch it realm. And step four is just mastery of that. Step four is being so good at that that you know when you're on and you know when you're not. It doesn't mean you're always on, but it does mean you know when you're on and you know when you're not. And then step five is having mastered it and now no longer being mad at yourself when you're back in step one. Because that's the trip up for most of you. In other words, that's when most masters lose their steadiness because they are frustrated with themselves that they are not able to maintain it more. So they are nicer to themselves. They are living a compassion about self. They are allowing themselves the benefit of movement within the energies. And so we would like to say that they understand the energies more. So it's the consistency, it's the momentum of it, and it's the ease with which they can move into that. So because they're in that place, they're able to receive and download infinite intelligence in an effortless way, pretty much? Yes, and so it's just a natural but life we, experience. But we can all do that too, correct? Everyone, without exception. So I feel like a lot of people don't. There was one Buddha, there was one Jesus. Well, you could there... call it the power of desire. You could call it, in some cases, momentum coming in, strong intention for that coming in. You could call it discipline, while we don't like that word much, but willingness to feel good and a discipline that says, I'm not willing to spend long periods of time where I don't belong. Someone said to Esther the other day, as she was in a the receptive mode, not this one, but this one, <laughs> you don't cope with negative crap very well, do you? Esther said, I can't cope at all. I've lost all my coping skills with negative emotion. I cannot cope with negative stuff. I can't cope with it anymore. I belong here. And when I'm not here, I'm really miserable. And that's mastery. That's mastery. That's reaching that place where you cannot bear it unless you are here. And then you're willing to do whatever it takes, even if it means be irrationally happy. I have no friends. <laughs> You certainly can't hang around with those friends. Yeah, yeah. Law of attraction won't put you there anymore. Yeah. So Neem Curly Baba, for instance, my mother and I, who's here, we've been watching documentaries about him. I've been really fascinated with this saint. We were walking the other day for my birthday downtown, and we walked past this bookstore, and we had an impulse to go into this bookstore. And we look right on the counter. I looked on the counter, and right there was a book about Neem Curly Baba that just got brought in that day. It was a used bookstore. And I was like, are you kidding me? Like, that's awesome. Like, <laughs> like our friend was talking about, timing. Right. I mean, just, Whatever's active in your vibration, the universe is saying, here you go, right. here you go, here you go. But that's happening to you all the time and to everyone else all the time. But the most important thing to focus upon here is that you were in the receptive mode of it. And so that 
idea turned to a thing immediately, as will all ideas turn to things immediately when you hang around in that receptive mode. So I want to be one of these people. <laughs> I want to be able to... It would be better for you to say, I am. I am, right. Yeah, I believe that. And then really mean it and don't make a big deal when you're having a step five moment. I think I'm doing pretty good. The most significant thing that we want to give to you, those who find alignment are advantageous because they help you to know that it is a possible human trait. The disadvantage is that you sometimes compare where they are after a lot of momentum of alignment mm -hmm. and where you may be mm -hmm. as you are finding your place within it. Right. That is disadvantageous to you. And so appreciate your own sainthood or your own God force mm -hmm. when you see it. The thing about so much of what you hear that others have lived is that a few hundred years from now, the story that our friend told us about his experience with his son, a few hundred years from now, the story will be told like this. My son was on his way. <laughs> to be anointed a very important award. <laughs> and he was prepared for it. And as he traveled without a vehicle, floating across the sky <laughs> in his jet body, he realized that he didn't have with him something. And so he held a thought, and it appeared in his hand in that moment. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way they'll tell the story. Yeah, totally. And you all will say, I can't do that. <laughs> but if you could go back to what really happened, his dad brought it to him because they were both in the zone, because they were both in the vortex, because they were both in the receiving mode and the magnificent law of attraction and all of the energy that creates worlds accommodated, you see. So you've got to experience your own miraculous. This is a modern day miracle. And these things are happening to you all day, every day, as the cooperative universe is bringing the components to you, you see. But when you compare it with stuff of other times and other languages that's been translated, and we are not for a moment suggesting that you shouldn't enjoy everything that you're reading. We're just saying your own connection to source energy is where your worthiness will come from. And that is the component that all of them came to understand. It's that feeling of worthiness. And you will not feel your own worthiness until the universe yields to you, till you've got your hands in the clay, until you watch something unfold in a magnificent way for you, until you felt the impulse, until you remember that little desire that grew into a bigger one. And then you remember that moment of the receptive mode and you felt that thrill of it. And then you watched yourself slip from it, but you brought yourself back there deliberately until you knew you owned that vibration about that. And then you watched the universe yielding to you you impulses and step by step until it unfolded and then you revel in the full receiving of it and you feel this sense of worthiness and at oneness and wholeness with all that is that's how you accomplish that mastery you don't accomplish it by reading what others have done where you can't feel the worthiness the personal worthiness when you read about other masters you accept their worthiness but it doesn't help yours you have to let the universe yield to you that was really good. So can you help me right now own the feeling of unconditional love? Because I, I feel like I live it and I know it and I do feel it, but... Well, yeah. let's give a new definition for it because sure. conditional love is, I see that and it makes me feel good. And so that's a conditional love. Right. And there's a sort of tricky trap in that because when I see that, I don't feel love. And so now I'm hooked on conditions. And so now I've got to control conditions in order to feel the way I want to feel. So that's why conditional alignment or conditional love or conditional clarity doesn't work out well for anyone. But unconditional love is when I meditate and quiet my mind so my mind is free of focus upon any condition and my vibration raises into the frequency of my source, so I'm feeling the wholeness of who I am, that is the best definition of unconditional love that we could ever give. Your mind is clear and you are experiencing that love. We would rather you be in a state of appreciation than in a state of meditation.
Because when you are appreciating, you are alert, you are awake, you are full body functioning, you are focused, and you are in sync with who you are. Appreciation is the best tool for hanging out in that vibration, you see. So we'd meditate and we'd appreciate and we'd be aware of how we feel. And we wouldn't work too hard when we know that we're not in this receptive mode when we're down here with the politicians. <laughs> we wouldn't try too hard to climb up out of it. Esther's been turning on the television just for information and turning it right back off again. She says, what's wrong with you guys? You're not getting... You're... It's like static to her. It's like, uh, like sticking your foot in a light socket and holding your hand in a bucket of water and holding something wet under your tongue and, and, and saying, give it to me, give it to me, give me today's news. So, what were you asking? Really owning that feeling that you were describing what all these masters are feeling. Really Finding the feeling within myself well, of it. mastery these days, you know what mastery these days is? Mastery these days is different than mastery in most of those days. Because mastery these days, do you know how much information you have flowing to you in any given moment? So that's what I'm talking about. You know about. how fast the energy is moving. You are so up to speed with this energy that creates worlds that your mastery will be far greater than anything that has ever happened before. But that's irrelevant. You see, we don't want any comparison with any previous or even any current other masters because the only relativity that is important to you is the relationship between who you are as this vibrational being and who you are letting yourself be with this current thought so it's the closing of that gap that is the mastery that you're talking about you're not trying to close the gap between you and buddha or between you and Jesus, because all of that is already in your vortex. All of that is the evolution of spirit and the evolution of energy that came before. You were all of that coming in, you see. You were up to speed with all of that coming in. This life experience has caused you to be a master of this time experience. They were masters of those time experiences upon which you have a foundation. You had that foundation coming in. We've never said that before. Did you follow that? And so you were that the day you were born. And you knew that you were. You knew that you were that, you see. But then you said, oh, but this time-space reality is different. I'm born on the leading edge. I'm born into this time-space reality. And so the things of this time-space reality will be the things that I will put forward into my vortex and that I will come into vibrational alignment with and that I will manifest. You see... Here's what you're feeling. You're really going to like this because this is a piece that you're looking for. This is what you're looking for. Creation is a wonderful thing and we really like to see you turn your vortex into reality. We really like it when the car is in your garage and the lover is in your bed and the money is in your bank. We like it when you've figured out how to get it out of the vibrational place and into the physical equivalent. We love watching you do that. But the part that you came for, the mastery that you came for, is not just the turning that thought to that thing and that thought to that thing and that thought to that thing and that thought to that thing. The mastery that you came for is for this dance that you do as the vibrational frequency that is you dovetails with the vibrational frequency of others and law of attraction will never make a mistake. And you get to collectively create something that is exponentially more magnificent, you see. It's the ideas that flow to you. It's your place in the idea. It's not you receiving the only good idea that ever happened. It's you being a component of the idea. It's the collective consciousness that it's all about. This is the time of cooperation. Law of attraction has always demanded that it be that. But you are consciously aware of it, you see. And so we're going to say it to you again, but we're going to say it in a way that you can hear it even more clearly. Thought to thing, yes, of course, thought to thing. We want all of that. But it is the conscious awareness of you holding the steady vibration that holds you in the place where you receive an idea and you know it. And you stand in that fertile place waiting for the next to come. And then you watch the timing bring you someone else and someone else. And then you hear the conversation cause it an evolution into a new idea. And you know that you are co-creatively moving thought. This is what you came for. This is co-creation at its best, you see. And so it doesn't get any better than this, but it gets steadier than this. That's the mastery where you're having an idea and you're flowing with it. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next video.